Hey, what is up guys? This is Nishi from MST.TV and today we are going to take a look at the Adventurer Token Engine. Now you guys might know this as the Brave Token Engine, that's what it's called in the OCG. This is a theme that is going to make its debut in the Grand Creators, a side set that is actually being released here in the TCG this week. Now the Adventurer Token cards are probably the most hyped up cards to come out of the set as they are actually a very useful, splashable engine that provide a significant boost to a lot of different decks. This is just a few cards, right, rather than the entire strategy, yet they do provide you with really consistent access to a free early Omni Negate that is incredibly simple to use. So in today's video, we are going to break down the main components of the Adventurer Token Engine that make it so splashable, see how the cards are being used, and also try to look at what your points of interaction are if you're playing against it. Let's get started. Okay, so I guess we're going to start off by breaking down the key individual cards from the Adventurer Token Engine. So I think the most important card from the engine here is the Rite of Aramisir. This card is pretty simple. If you don't have an Adventurer Token on the board, you get to special summon an Adventurer Token to your side of the field. And then if you don't have a Fateful Adventure face up, you also get to place a Fateful Adventure from your deck face up in your Spell and Trap card zone. So pretty simple effect overall, and of course we will see what Fateful Adventure is later on, but this basically gets you two pieces that you do need, right? The Fateful Adventure and the Adventurer Token, so it's what you want to open with whenever you're using the engine. Now this card does have a very important summoning restriction attached to it as well, which is that you can only activate the effects of special summoned monsters the turn you activate this card. So unfortunately it's just the normal summons that are basically shut off, meaning that if you were planning on normal summoning Alistair alongside the Adventurer Token cards, unfortunately you won't be able to search for Invocation, but yeah, not an extremely horrible restriction, especially given how most decks in the game today are focused around special summoning multiple times, but it's definitely something that you'll want to keep in mind. Next up, we have Water Enchantress of the Temple. This is a level 3 spellcaster monster, water attribute with 1500 attack points and 1200 defense points. Honestly, the stats probably aren't that important. Now, given that we just talked about how important the Rite of Aramis here is, this card is effectively just a search card for Rite. You can banish this card from your hand or graveyard to add a copy of Rite of Aramis here from your deck to your hand. Effectively, this means that you're running six copies of Rite, so in theory you're opening with it almost every single game. Do keep in mind that you can also get this effect by banishing the Enchantress from your graveyard as well, so if you needed to, you could use Foolish Burial to dump this and then search for Rite, or since Enchantress is a level 3, you can dump it using the effect of Cherubini in the Phantom Knight deck as well. This card does also have a couple of other effects. You can special summon it if you control an adventurer token, and then you can also use it to fetch a field spell from your deck that includes adventurer token somewhere in its text. Now, unfortunately, the field spells are not a part of this adventurer token engine that's going to be seeing so much play, and in my opinion, neither of them are that great, so we won't be covering them here. But if you are looking to play a pure adventurer token deck, then this other effect is probably worth noting as well. For most of us though, what we really care about is being able to banish the water enchantress to search for Rite of Aramis here. Okay, so we are on to Fateful Adventure. This is the continuous spell that you should be bringing out of your deck with the Rite of Aramis here. So first, the first time a monster that you control that is equipped with an equip spell would be destroyed by battle, it is not destroyed. Uh, not a super relevant effect, it's just kind of there. From here, it has two once per turn effects. The first is that during your main phase, you get to search for a monster from your deck that has Adventurer token in its text from your deck to your hand, and then you send a card from your hand to the graveyard. So your tip not searching the water enchantress instead you're gonna be searching for the next card which we're gonna take a look at after very clearly this is leading us to search for our Omni Negate. It also has an effect that says that if a monster is summoned, you get to take an equip spell that mentions Adventurer Token somewhere in its text from your deck and either add it to your hand or equip it to an Adventurer Token that you control. So this effect is kind of secondary, honestly, not as great as the monster search since your search targets just naturally aren't as good. We're going to look at a potential search target that does see play after we take a look at the monster. and also Although we do want to keep both of these effects in mind, it's the monster search that's going to bring us the greater overall benefit here. 
All right, so we are finally onto the Omni Negate, which is basically the entire reason that this whole engine is being played. So this is the monster that we are searching off of Fateful Adventure. Its effect is really quite simple. During the main phase, if you control no monsters or if you control an adventurer token, you get to special summon this card from your hand. Then when a card or effect is activated while you control an adventurer token, you get to shuffle this card back into your deck, negate that card's activation and destroy the card. Now each of these effects is once per turn, but very simply this provides you a very free negate. This can be as early as the second summon during your turn, since your first summon is probably going to be the adventurer token that you summon with the right of a Ramesir, so this definitely is also useful in helping you to play around Nibiru. Now the shuffle back into the deck is really interesting as well. It is unfortunate that you could end up drawing the griffin for turn after burning its negate. But I think that statistically that's pretty unlikely, especially if you are typically just playing the one copy of Griffin. You can also just use Fateful Adventure again the following turn to search for Griffin again, and assuming that your Adventurer token survived the turn, you get the free negate again as well. If you don't have the Adventurer token on board still, you are going to need to hope that you see another copy of Rite of Aramisir to generate another token, so that that way your Griffin Rider can be live once again. So there's one last piece of the engine that we're going to take a look at briefly here, it is Dracoback the Rideable Dragon. Now as I mentioned before, this is typically played as just a one of because it's a free plus one when you are using the Adventurer Token engine anyways. This card is actually kind of a going second card despite being an equip spell. While this card is equipped to a non-effect monster, you can target a card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. So. Basically, you search it for free with Faithful Adventure, and if you happen to be going second, you just equip it to your Adventurer token to hopefully bounce something on your opponent's board. It also has an effect where if it's sent to the graveyard, you can equip it to your Adventurer token that you control, which is a non-effect monster, which means that the bounce effect will still be live. So yeah, honestly, it's like not the most game-breaking or game-changing card or anything like that, but it is still a free plus one off of a card that you are already playing anyways, and it's situationally useful in interruption, right? So it is a one of that you're probably going to want to play if you're using the Adventurer Token Engine. Okay, so now that we've gone through all of the individual cards, we will take a look at some sample deck lists from over in the OCG that have used the Adventurer Token cards and been successful. So first up on screen, you guys are seeing a Phantom Knight deck from before the January 2022 ban list, which should be obvious given that Fusion Destiny is now banned over there. It is worth noting that on the most recent list, the OCG actually decided to semi-limit both the Water Enchantress and the Rite of a Ramesir, so current lists are only going to play two of each, but I feel like this list better shows how people will use the Adventurer token cards initially here in the TCG on the release of the Grand Creators, since Konami probably isn't going to hit a brand new engine so soon after its release. But yeah, three copies of Water Enchantress and three copies of Rite of Aramis here, since you want to see Rite as early as possible. Now with the other cards, Griffin, Fateful Adventure, and Dracoback, those are all looking like just one-ofs. This probably means that you aren't going to be using Pot of Desires in any deck that uses the Adventurer Token engine, and they probably can be a little bit bricky if you happen to open with any of the one-ofs in your opening hand, given how streamlined your order of searches is within this deck. But yeah, as you can see, Pretty simple engine to use with a straightforward ratio of pieces that you're going to play in your deck. Now one other list I'm going to show here briefly is a list post the January 2022 OCG ban list, so that's with the Water Enchantress and Rite Semi Limited. Honestly it's basically the same thing, right? One of each Griffin, Fateful Adventure, and Dracoback but semi-limiting the other two cards just to hit the engine's consistency. Here it's being splashed into a Despia deck, which obviously isn't full power here in the TCG yet, given that we don't have the Fallen of Albaz deck released. But this does go to show that even despite the loss of one Enchantress and one Right, the Adventurer token is still really useful over in the OCG, and will probably continue to see play here. In fact, this could give a pretty solid framework for how Despia decks will look like in the TCG here in just a few months. Alright, next up I'm looking here at ways to play around or counter the Adventurer Token Engine, so if it's before your opponent has done anything at all, you can shotgun the Artifact Lancia during standby phase. This prevents your opponent from banishing the Water Enchantress from hand as cost, and unfortunately this is the only time that the Adventurer Token Engine banishes things. It might be especially useful though against Phantom Knights since it does stop them from banishing things like Cloak or Boots or Fogblade from the graveyard, 
But do keep in mind that if you're shotgunning it, that does play into Gamma. Of course, you can also Ash the Water Enchantress as well since it is a search. The other thing that you can do is after the Enchantress resolves, you can drop Joel and Lockbird since even though they can still activate right to generate a token and activate the Fateful Adventure from the deck, they can't use Adventure to search for Griffin as well as do any other searches this turn. With Right of Aramisir, not really too many ways to hit that card specifically. I guess you could hit it with something like Crossout Designator. Uh, the other thing is that that's the only time that the engine generates the Adventurer token, right? So if you can pop the Adventurer token at this point, then that kind of renders the rest of the engine useless. With Fateful Adventure, that is a bit more of a vulnerable card as a continuous spell. Of course, you can Ash the Search, but you can also use Ghost Ogre to destroy it so that it doesn't get to resolve, or you could use standard back row removal such as Cosmic Cyclone or Twin Twisters to stop it from being able to search a monster. And then finally, there is the Griffin as well. Unfortunately, if the Griffin actually hits the board, then that means the negate is live, right? So you're probably gonna have to out it with some other cards. You can use Dark Ruler no more or Forbidden Droplet to negate its effect and then get rid of it, right? Or you could Kaiju it to get it off the board immediately. Do keep in mind that if you are able to do these things to out the Griffin and get it into the graveyard, that also means that they can't shuffle it back into the deck and reuse its negate. And most builds are only going to play one copy of Griffin anyways, so you could potentially shut down the entire engine. So yeah, there are multiple different ways that you can interact with the engine and cut it off, but it is just a matter of being able to draw the right interruption or negator disruption at the right time. Okay guys, that is it for today's episode. I think that the Adventurer token stuff is definitely really, really cool. It's a lot simpler than I think people expect it to be, but it does seem really free to set up that Omni Negate so easily and allow your deck's own combos to go through. I do think it's important for people to know and understand how engines like this work though, because if you're playing any sort of modern Yu-Gi-Oh, there's a really strong chance that you're going to be running into this engine at some point, being splashed into any number of decks. Strategies like Phantom Knights, Prank Kids, and Despia are all looking ready to use the Adventurer Token Engine to help them set up more freely, so make sure that you understand what these cards are, what they do, and how to play around them. Anyways guys, if you did enjoy today's video, please make sure that you let me know by hitting that thumbs up button for me. Also make sure you guys leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys think about the Adventurer Token cards and what deck you guys are planning on using them in in the comment section. Also let me know if you guys are planning on building something like the Exo Sisters or the Punk Archetype, two other really cool new archetypes that are coming out in the Grand Creators this weekend. And of course make sure that you guys hit that subscribe button to get all of the latest and greatest content from both Tombox and myself here on the channel. And until next time, guys, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV.